Hi everyone, welcome to part four of the Mule Software and Data Cloud Integration series. My name is Alex Martinez, and today we are going to learn how to secure your API with basic authentication in API Manager. So in the part two of this series, we'll learn how to retrieve the URL from Cloud Hub, but I did warn you a lot of times that you should not be sharing that URL with anyone else because they would have access to all of your credentials. So the solution to add security to that URL would be to add some security policies to the API. Now, this is perfect to do in MuleSoft because you do not need to know how to code these security policies. You can simply apply them using any point platform using clicks, not code. So let's learn how to do that. Now, some prerequisites before we get started. Of course, you will need to have an AnyPoint Platform account. I am expecting that you already went through parts one, two, and three of the series because you should have everything prepared for this. Then you will also have to download the version 200 of the jar. So if you go to github.com slash Alexandra Martinez slash data cloud dash mulesoft dash integration slash releases, and you get to the release 200, you can scroll down here and you will see the assets part. And here you have the 200 application jar. So download that because we will use it in a moment. Next, you will need your AnyPoint Platforms environment credentials. So in your AnyPoint Platform, go to Access Management right here. Go to Business Groups, select your own business group. Then click on Environments here and select your environment. In my case, this is going to be Sandbox. And here you can extract the client ID and the client secret. Finally, if you followed the part three or the previous part, you should already have your Postman collection ready to run. And please double check that this works before getting started. All right, so let's get started. First of all, go into your endpoint platform and then head to API Manager. In API Manager, click on Add API, Add New API. Here in the Runtime section, select Mule Gateway, leave all of the defaults and click on Next. Now in the API part, select create new API. In our case, we're going to name this data cloud API and select an HTTP API. Click on next. You can leave this downstream empty, click on next, and also leave the upstream empty and click on next. Now just review that everything looks good and click on save. Once you save it, you will be able to get the API instance ID from this part. So copy this number because we will use it later. Now let's upgrade the deployed Mule application. So if we go to Runtime Manager, open our app, and in the Settings tab, you will be able to see that you have your application file. So click here on Choose File, Upload File. And once you select the new jar, the 200, you will be able to see it here. You will also see the Apply Changes button that just appeared. But before we continue, let's go into the Properties tab and scroll down. We already had our Salesforce and CDP credentials, so let's go into the text view. And if you go into the description of the video, you will see the link to the article where you will be able to copy and paste this text right here because this contains all of the properties that you will need to upload here. So let me change into the table view to see them one by one. We have the Anypoint Platform Gatekeeper. This will be set to flexible. We have the API.ID, which is the API instance ID that we just copied. Let me put that there. Then we have the Anypoint Platform Client ID and Anypoint Platform Client Secret, which are the two credentials that we got from the beginning. Your client ID should look something like this, and I will put the client secret in a moment. After you add both of the client ID and client secret, remember to click on protect so that no one can actually get to this value. Perfect. Now, these are all of the properties that you should have. You can pause this video if you need to take a look at them. After you are done, you can click on Apply Changes. Now, once this has been deployed, you will see this as running and there will be no processes here. If for some reason it's taking more than expected, like more than five minutes and nothing is happening, just make sure and double check that all of the properties you set up are correct. Now, after this, let's go back to API Manager. So if we open the menu and select API Manager, we will be able to see our API, select that. 
And now you will see the API status here set as active. If for some reason you are not seeing it, you can also refresh the page and make sure that this appears as active. If it doesn't, please make sure that you are using the correct API instance ID and your environment credentials. And if you come back to Postman and run the query again, you will receive a 200 OK because everything is good. Now let's go back to API Manager and now we can start adding the policies. So select the Policies tab, click on Add Policies, search for the basic authentication sample, click on Next, and then just add whatever username and password you want to use for your own credentials. In my case, as an example, I am going to be setting this up to foo and bar. Do not use this, please create your own credentials. And once you have added them, click on apply. Once this policy has been created, you will see this um, green message and then you can go back to Postman and send this again. It will take a few seconds, but eventually you will be able to see the error being shown. And here we have it. We have a 401 unauthorized and we have the error saying that you are supposed to be sending basic authentication, but you are not sending it. So to fix that, we will add the credentials to our environment and then we will reference them from our collection. So it applies to all of the requests. So if we go to the environments and select the Cloud Hub environment we had previously created, let's add a new variable called username. And in the current value, we will write foo. Now let's add the other variable, which is password. And then in the current value, we will set this up as bar. If you don't want to show this, you can also change this type as secrets and it will appear like that. So if you are sharing your screen or something, you won't, people won't see your credentials. In my case, I am just going to let it be as default. So you can see my credentials for now and then Click on save or select control S or command S to save the environment. Now let's go back to the collections tab and open our collection by clicking it here. In authorization, let's select the type as basic auth. And then in the username, we can create the variables. So if we use the double curly brackets, we will be able to select the username. And the same thing for the password. Let's add the double curly brackets and select password. So now if you hover over it, you will be able to see that it says foo and this one says bar. So make sure to save this. And now you can go back to your query and send it. And now we receive a 200 OK because now we are sending our basic authentication with Postman. And that's all. Congratulations, you applied a basic authentication security policy to your API without having to code anything into it. Just as a summary, you had to create an API in API Manager like this one, and then you had to copy the API instance ID in order to send it into the new jar file that we have created. So here we had to upgrade this to the version 2.0.0, which is the change to the code that I created in order for you to uh, activate auto discovery. Then we also added the properties, the API ID, the gatekeeper, um, the plan, any point platform client ID and client secrets in order to be able to apply the policies. And finally, we added the two variables to the environment. And then we also modified all of the Postman collection to contain the username and the password. And that's all for this video. Remember to follow us in all of our socials in prozap.com. Subscribe so you can receive notifications as soon as we post any new content. Also in our YouTube channel slash prozap so you receive notifications as soon as new videos are uploaded. And feel free to contact me for any questions or suggestions that you may have for me. I am happy to keep creating content for you all. That's all then. I will see you in the next video. Bye.